Kala has a long um, history of cheetah conservation. It's one of our priority conservation uh, species. We work closely with the Endangered Wildlife Trust and their cheetah metapopulation project. Um, all of our cheetah are, are free ranging on the, on the, on the greater reserve, 8,500 hectares. They, they hunt for themselves, they interact with each other. They're what we call lion savvy, lion adaptive. They interact with lion, often some close shaves, which, which gives us gray hairs, but touch wood, um, nothing too negative so far. Um, and Amakala is a, a, an ecotourism resort, so the cheetah generate revenue by, by just existing and our guests uh, view them and take photos of them and um, they're all very relaxed with vehicles and, and that sort of thing. So the reason why it's one of our conservation priorities is because they are on the decline and have been for a long time now. They traditionally um, under a lot of pressure from from mostly human, negative human uh, effects such as habitat encroachment, um, you know, wild land turning into farmland, and then there's clashes with domestic stock, and, and cheetah are persecuted, um, and basically they're just running out of space. They need a lot of space. Your your top of the pyramid animals, your predators, your cats, your lions, your cheetah, they. They exist in low numbers in big areas because they um, they have a big impact in terms of predation and that sort of thing. So you don't get herds of cheetah, you just get one or two because they um, their energy demand is quite high in terms of, of resources. So they need big areas and big areas are, are becoming few and far between as farmlands increase and, and areas are cleared for farmlands and fences go up and more towns are created and, and space for cheetahs has become very limited in the last um, 20 to 30 years. So what we're finding now is uh, game reserves, private game reserves like Amakala are sort of the last or one of the last refuges for, for cheetah. You've got your big national parks, especially um, up in uh, Namibia and those sorts of areas where it's a stronghold for cheetah and Kenya. But what we're finding is the only places where we're seeing population increases is in the, the private reserves. And South Africa has a very good network of private reserves. And it's managed with cheetah, it's managed as a meta population. So because they're all isolated like little islands, uh, we have to mimic the, um, the gene flow and the migration and the immigration between these areas ourselves by catching the animals and, and moving them. And the Endangered Wildlife Trust has a very good program that um, manages the genetics and the, the, the histories of the different reserves and tries to get the, the best cheetah to the best areas in terms of gene flow and, um, and that sort of thing. Gene flow is quite important with cheetah because many millions of years ago they went through a population bottleneck and there was only a few hundred left. So from that small population, all the current cheetah um, have come from that. They say they are as related as identical twins. All cheetah everywhere are as related as human identical twins. Twins. So you have to make sure that the genes you try and uh, incorporate as much diversity in your cheetah population so they can withstand changes in the environment and they're, and they're tougher in the long run. So that's where the, the EWT has played a key role in, is in managing the genetics. And also just assisting the, the, the private reserves when they have cheetah available um, is, to, is to match them, those cheetah with the, the best uh, introduction location. So that happened with us um, recently. We had uh, uh, cheetah that were born here and um, we would love to have kept them here, but unfortunately for two reasons, one being um, we we don't want inbreeding for the genetic reasons I've mentioned. We don't want the, the offspring to breed with their parents. And secondly, like I've also mentioned, cheetahs need a lot of space. So we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we can't handle a high cheetah density in terms of the impact on the prey populations and the impact of the cheetah on each other. There would be a lot of fights between the males. The, the females would be under a lot of pressure from the males uh, as well. And there would be a lot more interaction with the lions, which would result in a lot more deaths. 
So we know what cheetah density we can handle sustainably in the long term. Um, but then obviously also for genetic reasons, we, we, when cheetah become independent, uh, which is usually around 18 months of age, they, they, their mother leaves them. They, they usually can hunt by themselves by then or they, they start hunting then. And that's when it's a good time to, to, to look at how the cheetah that we've uh, produced here can, can go and help the, the population in general. So with the last bunch, um, we, we worked with the EWT and, and another group called Africa Parks, who manage a lot of the national parks in, in countries like Malawi and, and um, those sorts of places. And, and they were very keen on getting cheetah back into Malawi. And it sounded like such a, a cool idea to reintroduce cheetah to, to a country, to an area where they haven't been for, for, for decades from persecution from, from people, you know. So Africa Parks have managed to get the national parks up to a state where the cheetah would be able to, to exist again. Um, so, yeah, we sent a female up there and, um, and she was one of the first ones out of, out of the, the, the half a dozen or so that they sent up there. She, she had her cubs first, so we were quite proud of that. And, and since then, other females have had cubs there and, they, and their population is, is doing really well there. Prior to that, in um, 2013, we actually, within South Africa, uh, cheetah that were, were born on Amakala uh, were reintroduced to the Free State province, to a, to a, a big uh, reserve up there, and they became the first free-roaming cheetah in the Free State in over 100 years. So, it's sort of, you know, we started locally within South Africa, recolonizing re areas with, with wild free-roaming cheetah, and, and sort of grew internationally and we're, and we're quite proud of that. Looking forward, um, we just want to keep being a source population of wild, free-roaming, lion-savvy cheetah um, that can go on to either recolonize or augment existing populations of cheetah um, within and, and outside of South Africa. Um, so we will work closely with the EWT. We, we currently have adult cheetah with very, um, a very good genetic combination, very distinct genetics from some uh, Namibian background and some with a, a more sort of East African background that together are creating really strong um, gene lines, really strong cats that um, will go on to, to hopefully add to the population for decades to come. So the current sub-adults we have at the moment are, are almost at that state of independence where we're going to probably move into other uh, metapopulation reserves within South Africa. Um, again, working with the EWT on that. So yeah, we just want to continue to be a, a source population of strong, healthy cheetah that um, are just adding to the, the, the entire population and hopefully going to turn the decline of, of cheetah numbers globally into, into an increase. And um, at the same time, trying to maintain genetic diversity and I guess you would call it ethics in, 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 in producing wild free roaming cheetah, not, not hand raised or, or farm cheetah. These animals are, are born wild and they stay wild. So um, that is our, our conservation goal with regards to cheetah.